Hola amigos, ¿qué tal? Stuart here from Spain Speaks with another update from Spain about the current crisis that we have here at the moment and the lockdown that has been in place for the last six days. There's been a couple of things that have happened since I last put out a video and uh, one of the main things is that Spain's head of state, King Felipe, has uh, come out, made a public appearance, his first one since the crisis began, and he has said that Spain is going to defeat this crisis. He's been keeping a bit of a low profile recently because there has been another scandal that's been going on in the background, a scandal related to his father, the former king of Spain, Juan Carlos, and apparently some illegal bank deposits that he has in Switzerland and some money that he received from the Saudi Arabians. So the king has been keeping a bit of a low profile and there have been some protests also going on over the last few days. Some of the more left-wing groups have also been protesting. Now the next thing on the agenda is that the economy continues to take a hit and some uh, disturbing news came out earlier this week that perhaps up to 3 million jobs will be suspended this month and there might be up to 300,000 permanent job losses by the end of the year. Uh, one of Spain's biggest employers, Inditex, they are the owners of brands like Zara. They uh, came out, or there were rumors, let's say, that they were going to suspend up to 37,000 jobs, but they rectified or they said that they weren't going to do it just yet. They're going to wait to see how the economy develops over the next few weeks. And I think the deadline that they have put down is the 15th of April to see whether they need to do one of these temporary redundancy plans, which many, many companies are doing at the moment. And as I said, up to 300,000 jobs may be destroyed by the end of the year and up to 3 million jobs uh, this month alone. So quite severe statistics from an economy point of view. Now, some good news is that uh, some key hotels in Madrid in particular have been turned into temporary hospitals and they are providing extra beds in order to help the health system uh, come to terms with the amount of cases that have popped up in the last few days. Obviously, the hospital system is under intense pressure, so some key hotels with a lot of beds have been able to uh, donate their services to the administration, to the government, in order to get temporary hospitals up and running. So that's a positive note there. The government also announced that they are calling on retired doctors and also medical students to come into the workforce in order to handle the demand which the hospital system is facing at the moment. There aren't enough doctors, there aren't enough hospital beds. So hopefully with the extra doctors being called into the system and also with these hotels turning into temporary uh, hospitals, we'll be able to get this problem under control a lot quicker. Because that's basically the main issue that we have, that the hospital system is at risk of collapsing. And uh, that's the last thing that people want to happen. Because obviously if that happens, the situation is going to be a lot worse. If there aren't doctors enough to cope with the patients, if there aren't enough hospital beds for the needy, this is when it will become even more of a problem than it already is. Now it's fundamental to stop the spread. Somebody in a comment the other day asked me if Spain was in total lockdown. And the answer to that question is yes. People are not allowed to go outside of their homes into the streets unless it is for a specific purpose. And those purposes I mentioned the other day were that, for example, going to a supermarket, going to a pharmacy, taking the dog for a walk, and a couple of other things like, for example, going to work or getting home if you have been caught in a place that is not your permanent place of residence. Uh, apart from that, you cannot do anything, basically. You can't go into the street to do exercise. You can't go uh, for a walk in the street. All of those things are prohibited. So there is a complete lockdown. There is a hashtag circulating at the moment, which is Quédate en Casa, stay at home. So the hashtag Quédate en Casa, stay at home, is circulating, and they're trying to get the measure across. Unfortunately, there are some people that are not heeding to these measures, the uh, Guardia Civil and the police are arresting people on a daily basis, people that are not paying attention to the lockdown laws. And obviously, they're going to face the full brunt of the law over the next few weeks. If you get caught outside your home and you are not doing one of the things that you are allowed to do, be careful. So from that point of view, Spain is in full lockdown. All hotels have been ordered to close within the next seven days. So there's going to be no hotels open. Now, apparently, there are still 
up to 100,000 tourists stuck in Spain. And there's also around 60,000 Spaniards apparently outside of the country on holiday somewhere. And uh, the government here is trying to get those people back. And I'm sure that the governments in other countries are also trying to get people home. But 100,000 people in the Canary Islands, Balearic Islands, and on the mainland here in Spain. So still a lot of people here, really without much idea of what is going on. Perhaps they don't speak the language, so it's important to get these measures across that people need to stay indoors, okay? Don't go outside because you do risk the fine and you do risk a possible jail sentence if you are caught more than once. So be careful and stay at home. Now, it's been very difficult to order food online. A lot of the uh, big supermarket chains here, for example, Mercadona, has said that they have suspended uh, food deliveries online. They obviously don't have the ways to cope with the demand. Amazon also is experiencing problems to keep up with the demand. I think they announced yesterday that they're going to hire a lot more delivery drivers in order to keep up with the demand. But yesterday, for example, the website crashed. It's impossible to get a home delivery of food from Amazon. I think you can still get other deliveries, but food from Amazon, very, very difficult at the moment from the Prime Now. Uh, Carrefour, or Carrefour as they call them here, they've also suspended home deliveries except for people in need, the elderly, families where there is a pregnancy, and other people that have disabilities and uh, aren't able to get to supermarkets. Carry 4 has limited their service for those people. And El Corte Inglés, again, which is another big supermarket chain here, almost impossible to get a delivery because the system continually keeps on crashing because people don't want to leave their homes. People don't want to go to the supermarket unless it's absolutely necessary. So therefore, a lot of these uh, online food services can't keep up with the demand. So we'll see how that plays out over the next few days. The police have also set up road controls because a lot of people have decided that they're going to go to their second residence for the weekend, get out of the cities, maybe go to their country home. So the police have set up roadblocks in order to stop people from doing this. And there were some incidences in the Basque country in the last couple of days of people that have decided to get out of Bilbao. Remember that one of the problems here in Spain is that cities are often very cramped. People live in very cramped living conditions. A lot of people are confined to flats or apartments. People don't live in houses here in the majority of the cases. So people are doing whatever they can to try to get out. And a lot of people have been caught going to second residences or on their way to second residences. Uh, and they are being stopped by police and told to go home. So again, try to stay at home if you can. And finally, the Spanish army is now deployed in 59 cities as of yesterday, I believe. And they're not only doing controls to keep people uh, off the streets, but they're also now doing tasks like uh, disinfecting public areas in Catalonia, for example. So 59 cities with the army deployed. They're also taking control of sensitive areas. Spain has uh, a few nuclear plants and the army has now taken control of those areas as well, just in case somebody decides to uh, take advantage of the weak state at the moment and maybe try to attack one of these sensitive areas here in Spain, like, for example, a nuclear power plant. So the army is also deployed to control those areas as well. And uh, I imagine that this is going to be the case in uh, a lot of the key strategic uh, infrastructure here in the country because uh, you never know if somebody might decide to take advantage of the situation and do something that they shouldn't. So uh, the army is also now in control of those places. So that's it. So that's all for today. Questions and comments in the section below. I will let you debate this issue out below. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. I'll see you in the next update from Spain. Hasta luego and uh, stay safe.